All right, somebody asked me to make a video on how to make a logo. Uh, this actually turns into a two-dimensional logo for Rocket League. I made a couple of um, awards for a trophy, uh, so this actually glued onto a trophy base. So I'm going to go through how that's done. Um, so the first thing I do is I Google search um, a Rocket League logo. So <clears throat> you typically want to go to images and then you want to do your search tools and change your size to large so that way you get um, a high quality vector file usually they don't have vectors for these but you could also type in vector and um, sometimes you get a decent one um, out of there but this one looks pretty good right here so we're going to go with this so I'm going to um, save this logo. I don't know what that did. Um, I'm going to save image as. And then I'm going to put this, I'll just do it right here. So Rocket League logo, I'm going to bring it into Corel. So I'm going to import. And Go to download, should find my Rocket League logo. Right there. And here's my logo. And this isn't a great logo. You can see how pixelated that is. So this isn't the best logo, but it'll do uh, for what we're trying to accomplish. So we can go into bitmaps. And Quick Trace works a lot of times, um, but I'm going to show you sometimes that it doesn't work. So if we click on Quick Trace, you can see that we lose a lot of the detail. So here's my original bitmap, and now here's the, the Quick Trace version. So you can see that like the headlamp and some of these things, these details are gone. So if you want to just kind of a, you know, quick and dirty, that gets it done, but I don't like it. So I'm going to go into Bitmaps and go to Outline Trace and then click on Logo. And this then allows me to change the detail of my logo. So I can go um, a little more detailed. And now you can, if you look here, you'll see that we can now see these little grill marks and these pieces here. And then the other thing that I can do is I can go in and change the number of colors down to like, you know, four colors. And Now I can see that, okay, I'm down to four colors, but I can even make these two colors if I want to make it two colors, and it will merge all of these colors that are similar to each other. So essentially it makes a black and white image, and you can kind of scroll over and see what the grill looks like. That looks pretty good. These lamp little marks look pretty good. So this actually looks pretty decent. Um, you can change the settings and change the smoothing, so it can, you know, you can reduce smoothing if you want. Um, if you want it more blocky, um, or you can increase smoothing. Those are kind of settings that you can pick and choose, but this looks pretty good. Um, and I'm going to click on OK. And now, ooh, I lost some, uh, some detail here, so I'm not happy about that. I didn't notice that, so I'm going to go back. Uh, let me go back into my, let's go into this detailing, drop the smoothing out, and I'm going to do colors, I'm going to just do three colors this time, and then I'm going to merge my own colors, so you can see how this um, is set up, I'm going to merge then these two together, so I'm going to hold down control, select both of those and then click on merge and now this is all one color so we just fix that real quick and there we go so that looks pretty decent again I can scroll and I can look at these things um, so there's a couple little cleanup things that I want to do here uh, the first one is to I'm going to go over here to Properties. Now, sometimes you have to go into Edit and then Check Properties, so it's over here on these tabs. Um, 
but I'm going to go to go into properties and I'm going to make all these have hairlines so I can actually see them. And then I'm going to ungroup. So that way these are, these are individual pieces now. So like, see this, this moves as a whole piece. Um, so move that back. And then sometimes I want to ungroup those. So now I have this little piece. So I don't want these little white pieces in here. So I'm going to ungroup there and I'm gonna grab this uh, that's not what I wanted I want to break that curve apart and now this is a separate piece so I can delete that and a lot of times you can now delete all of this blue because if you look at the blue section it's already highlighted with the white so I'm just gonna grab this top white piece and move that out of there you can see that all those details are still there. This is basically an outline trace now of my entire uh, logo. And if I wanted to, I could break these apart and I could recolor them. So if I break this curve apart, this is the back piece. So I can move this. So it's got a fill now of white. So I can just turn that fill off. And now you can see these pieces again. So I can turn this and I could, you know, I could do blue. I could uh, take this one and turn it blue. So, you know, you could go back and, and recolor this. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to delete that setup. Um, but anyway, this is basically the outline of the logo. And what I usually think about when I do logos is how is this going to look in space um, if I do a two-dimensional um, or if I do a 3D kind of plaque. So if you look at my final product, this is the base layer. And the black lines are just a little engraving, so I know where to line up these lines. Now, in this case, you don't really need them because this red line, this outline, is the same as this outline. So they just go right on top of each other. So I would spray paint this blue, you know, to match this. And you could do a fade effect on it, and you could spray, you could mask off, and then you could paint this little top up here gray. But I really want this to be, like, sticking out. So this ball piece comes out toward you. So it's actually three layers if I were doing this, but I, I made this for somebody else and this is what they wanted. So here's the first layer. This would be the second layer, but this piece right here, this circle would be black, and then I'd have another cutout circle that would stick on top. So if you imagine three-dimensionally, here's your base. This would be blue. This would be then white, and that sticks on top of it. And then this would be gray, and that sticks out even further. Um, to kind of give it a three-dimensional shape. Or you could even like cut a ping pong ball or something um, to give it a spherical shape and stick that on there if you were, you know, if you wanted a logo similar to that. You could even size it so that that circle is then one and a half inches or whatever the diameter of a ping pong ball is. Cut a ping pong ball in half, stick it there, and be good to go. Um, but anyway, we're close. So this is where we're at. We can basically get rid of all of this, delete all of that. Um, and this is where we can start making some changes in our actual lines. So if we look at these lines, you know, there's this kind of garbage down in here. Well, you can go to this edit tool, the shape tool, and now you can see kind of how that zigzag occurs. And that's because this line and this line, these extensions that kind of change the shape, they, they were overlapping. So when you do that, it creates kind of a zigzag. So you could just double click and remove that entire middle step. Um, you can click on some of these and see what's going on. If you don't like the shape of these grill pieces and you want them more rectangular, you can. I kind of think it looks cool like this. Some of these pieces that are kind of touching, you can move and create some gaps. If you wanted to create some gaps between the parts. So if I want to move this, because when the laser cuts, um, you know, you don't, you might not want to you know, have those pieces cut out, uh, that they're touching. So it gives you some space there. Again, same thing kind of here. You know, you could create a little little distance if you needed to um, on these pieces, kind of whatever, but it allows you to move and change and manipulate um, the sketch before you're finally done with it. Next thing I do, I can highlight everything. I'm gonna change it to red because that's what my laser cuts. And then I'm going to just take the outline piece, or you could copy and paste. A lot of times I'll just do like a copy and then paste. Now I've got a second version of it. And now I can go in and I can change these all to black. 
for the interior cuts. And again, I don't need all of them, and I really don't need any of them the way that this logo is, is made. But I just want to show you if you were going to stack pieces on top of this, um, this is the way you would do it. Um, so that you have a way to line them up. And then you could delete these interior sections because they're not really necessary to have all this detail in here. Nope, didn't want to move that. Control Z. So you could come in here and delete all these little pieces out. So hopefully you see that's kind of how it's done. At this point, you want to group these together or you can actually combine them. So now that it's all one kind of unit. So when you go into Object Manager and you look at all these different curves, like these are individual curves. This is a group of eight curves. But if I click on this one, this is one full curve for this entire piece. So it kind of it makes all of these lines all one single entity on your Object Manager. Um, and then once you have that all done, you group it, and that's kind of how I arrived at this. So you've got your two pieces. You can then um, scale them, so just kind of highlight them together and scale them together so that they remain the same size. You can always check that if you click on it, and then click on this one. Those sizes should not change. Um, hopefully that helps. Uh, that's kind of how I take a logo and convert it into a 2D or a 3D uh, plaque.